Well, Tam, if there's ever one person that <sighs> is inextricably linked to Vim Janssen, it's yourself. Um, the book is a celebration of a great man yeah. as a player and a manager. What was yeah. you like as a manager? Yeah, um, uh, a lot of similarities to what we're new managers like just now. Slightly different philosophy, but more obviously playing football. Um, but key to it was being able to add some very good players. We've just seen somebody walk by there who was a European Cup winner the year before he joined us, Paul Lambert. Um, and we needed that because you know, obviously Henrik Larson, the King of Kings, as we talk about. Um, he managed to bring in players that had an impact, and uh, certainly we'll, we'll look at the current manager, Nange, uh, and that's what he's done, uh, bringing in players. Uh, but I, I probably some is in terms of how to, to start and rebuild a team, um, giving confidence to players, uh, as, as he did way back then. Um, but uh, key to it, I think, is trying to fill your, player, uh, your, your team and your philosophy, and sticking by also as well, very somebody who's stuck by his philosophies and how the game should be played. Um, we were always the two strikers. That changed. The Dutch system came in, just the one striker. Maybe somebody off it as well at times. Um, but uh, for the most part, it was, uh, that's the way he. No, that's just, this is the way I play the game. I remember we had a game going down Liverpool and uh, we went out and away goals. And towards the end, you know, throw the big centre, as we always did. Throw. No, he still believed in his philosophy. We're keeping, no, we need to play, keep it going, try and create opportunities and stuff. So. Uh, a man of principles um, who obviously had a massive impact here, not only just for the, this club, but obviously for myself and giving me a fantastic honour of captain in this team. Yeah, and with that point of being the captain, did, uh, you know, you're his, you're his wingman essentially on the part. Did you like him as a manager? What was he? Yeah, what was he was like fine. Absolute pros. It seemed quiet enough, but whether that was just uh, you know, the difference in communications with the language and whatever. His English was excellent. Uh, very, very good. Um, I, but he would always remain calm. You know, I'd, I'd, you seen a, I don't think I'd seen his temper too often. There wasn't too many raised voices uh, in the dressing room. and try to keep that calm as well. And I think that was his... His personality, you've seen him in a football part as a player. When you look back now and, uh, and seen the style of play, it was a bit trying to be calm in that mid midfield and, and, and organising things. Uh, and that's what he was like as a manager. Um, very principled, very very principled about how he wanted to play the game. Uh, and he just kept going with that and, and thankfully was very successful for us in that one season that was here. Yeah, and in that season, it yeah. was it was... The end was oh, just yeah. the perfect part for him, wasn't it? It was, yes. Um, it was what he was come here to do, and thankfully he got the results. It, it, it took us a wee while to get going um, in terms of the, his philosophy, and, and us being able to change that. Certainly, if some players, you know, Henrik come out, he would know about it, but certainly us in the style of football that we were used to with two strikers, um, but to get used to that, that, that different type of movement, um, as much as a modern manager Aaron has done just now. Um, but we didn't play about the back as much as what, what uh, the team have at this moment in time. And so we had to learn those things and develop those things and it was just a gradual process of getting better. Uh, something clicked along the way and we started to get better and starting to compete. And, uh, and, and thankfully it worked out for us. It was, it was excellent and who knows the, the impact of you know, if I had been staying around for a few seasons more, I'm, I'm sure it would have got better and better. Yeah, everybody knows how he's etched himself into history yeah. as a manager and the team that he put together and what they achieved. But a lot of other people look and think, just as you mentioned there, he brought Henrik Larsson to the club. <laughs> Managers are judged uh, on their results, but they're all, they, they get results by how they can change a club. And very few can ever change a club with the players that lost and which we did, we didn't win the season previously. So they're judged on what kind of players do they bring into the, uh, the, the, the club. That, that's key to their philosophies and how they can get players to play to that. And when you look at the signings and the impact the signings have, obviously Henning was key. We've just said, I've talked about a European Cup one. And think about that, you know, we're, we're going to go and try and find somebody for Real Madrid. It wouldn't happen, we couldn't afford them now. We get Paul Lambert, thankfully he was Scottish, and I think that had a, 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 a huge impact. But to get a European comfort for the previous season, uh, it was outstanding. Amongst other players that came in, uh, Big Matt Reaper was another one who, who then Harold came in, much maligned Harold, was, was a goal scorer. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think other players that came in that uh, made, made, made a difference uh, to the team. And that's what you've got to have. You've got to players. I lied to some of the players who were already there, the ones 
you know, that could develop and change and, and, and come um, like myself and, and, and amongst Big Alan Stubbs and guys like that. So um, th th there was a mixture, a combination of things that came together. Uh, but as you say, what the manager is judged on is what's his signings like. Um, because I remember when I joined here uh, way back, and it was a failing of Liam Brady's, was the signings that he made didn't have the impact that you would want. You know, because well, I was a swap deal with, he's I think one of the, yeah. in fact, the most, um, uh, 1.2 million for Tony Cascarino, I think one of the most expensive uh, signings. Um, and so I was a swap deal with him. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, they're judged on that. And there certainly was no failing there with, with the players he brought in. Yeah, I, I, although there were some special games, I view my, um, you know, my thoughts are that the, the one game that sticks out in my mind that kind of a really uh, brought home the belief that the players had yeah. in the manager was here, January, yeah. Rangers, yeah. That, that game, I think it, it, it turned the season. It did. It was a, a very pivotal time uh, in terms of obviously the Rangers having um, taken a little lead. There was a little gap of four points at the top of the league uh, at the time. Uh, and had Rangers won here, they would have went to um, seven. So we knew we had to develop uh, or, or put in a performance, a level performance. And I think there was a good statement in that saying that we can keep because the records were against us uh, in so many times, in so many games, and how Rangers used to come and sit in and defend, as they did in that game, and we would maybe make a wee mistake or a, or, or a bit of brilliance for a Rangers player, and it cost us in so many games, so many times. Uh, but that, there was a different feeling about that, and thankfully uh, Craig Burley opened the scoring uh, uh, late on, and then Paul Lambert, the, the outstanding one. But it was, it was a, a performance that, no, we got what we deserved in the end in terms of how we played. Um, we, we played with an intensity, we played with a passion, we played with desire. But we got were, uh, rewards uh, for that kind of style of football. We took our chances late on when they came, uh, didn't early enough because Andy Gorham, who was in the goals, was outstanding. Um, so yeah, it was, a, a, it was a, a kind of performance, as you say, that uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of wee things along the way that you need wee lifts. And I think we got a good one from that. Can you see great similarities now with the, the current manager? There, there is, in terms of how the success in the first year was a League Cup, was a um, uh, and, and the league, uh, which is Angie's done. And Angie's seems to, the, the, the philosophy that Angie's had has now kicked on a bit in terms of the, the whole squad, the whole players, in terms of we've got an absolute massive squad. Um, but that's what you want. You want two players to talk about the two players. For, we seem to have that at the moment. And so that, that certainly has kicked on. I'm sure that would have happened if uh, Vim would have been manager away back in terms of his development of the next season. But um, I think obviously the fallout, the manner principle that he was, um, that didn't happen. But uh, yep, certainly this season, I, I, I think I said it the other day there, but um, I don't think we've felt better at any given time. We, while we're watching the team and the style of football, and we were playing, and even getting beat 3 0 against the European champions, come back, we're still getting a bit of credit because we went toe to toe for them for a, for a long while. Um, a bit like Joe Bugner away back in, uh, <laughs> against Ali, uh, away back all those years ago, that kind of style. Despite the fact they lost 3 nothing to the European yeah. champions, which is nothing to be ashamed no. of, I, I would imagine Celtic didn't want to have the break, albeit there is a mark of respect to the Queen, but the, you talk about momentum, it's probably come at the worst time for them. Yeah, but it's, it's only a week, I'm, I'm, we're, we're playing on Wednesday night, so it's uh, or eight days, just over um, a week, so there's not much a difference that you can do there, and, and actually for some of our players, I'm not sure, Starfelt was one who has a wee injury, they may get over that, but I don't think the momentum that we have uh, will we'll stop in any way, I think Andrew will make sure that the style of football won't change. So I would imagine we'll just go out and attack. Hopefully we'll be a wee bit more clinical um, than we have been, uh, sorry, as we have been all season. Uh, and maybe that was just a wee thing missing against Real Madrid. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll get into that game full of confidence in terms of how we are playing. Uh, but it will be every bit as difficult. Uh, I think they'll probably play a slightly different system. Um, I wouldn't imagine they'll be as gung-ho as, not gung-ho, what's wrong, what to say of, of Real Madrid, it's just the quality they've got, the players, they can have confidence in giving the players in the sticks. Um, I, I'm not sure what uh, Shakhtar will be up at that level, but it's an away game. I know it's in a neutral venue, it's still an away game, and we need to start to get games there and win games uh, away from home as regular as we can, uh, hopefully here at Celtic Park. Just finally, give us your all assessment of what we can expect from Angie's side in the group. Do you think 
they're looking and saying Europa League is realistically it, or do you think he's saying no, there's something yeah. else here? Well, the intention of a hope that they are going to finish as high as they can, and that would be trying to get into a second place. Now, the, the, the realism may not come to it, but we'll find out in the next two games. I don't think, as I've said elsewhere, I don't think we could have got a harder start where you're playing, I know a home game, but you're playing the European champions here uh, at Celtic Park, and we gave a good go. And then the next two games are two away games. Um, so uh, it, it couldn't have been a hard start in this group. Uh, and so we'll get an indication of where we are after that. And even then, you know, it could hopefully work for us because then we'll have two games at Celtic Park, depending on those results. And then Real Madrid hopefully would have qualified by then. But wait, I know it's <laughs> all made, up in but, so, yeah, so but We're away up in butts, <laughs> but um, we'll get an indication uh, of where we are after the, uh, the Shakhtar game uh, this Wednesday. So uh, fingers crossed we can do something there. And the last point which I put to Simon and Paul Lambert, can you see anybody stopping Ange Postecoglou's side domestically? Domestically, uh, on current form, uh, I, I think um, it's very early. Shall I, shall I, shall I play the political answer here and say, uh, listen, we're only in September. <laughs> it was talked about in September of last year that the league was over when we went to Ibrox and lost one now. Um, we are playing well. We'll get full of confidence. But there's a hell of a lot of football left. Players, so we'll wait and see. But in terms of current form, we couldn't ask for any more than we'll get. If you enjoyed our content, subscribe to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel.